name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Lovely, bright, sunny day for us to come. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. That's a challenge that the Lord throws down to each of us, to follow him very closely and to give generously. The gospel today is about the widow's might. She gave all she had, not just a spare change in her purse or her pocket. And we're asked to do the same, to give not just in money, but in our faith, our surrender to the Lord. We've assembled today around the altar of God to worship him. This is our due. The first duty of any Christian is to worship and praise God, to love him with all our hearts and mind, and then to love our neighbor as ourselves. The two go together inextricably. Let us call to mind our sins and those things which have spaced us from God, where we've pushed him away for, through our own individuality, our own waywardness of life and ask for his forgiveness today. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all our adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue it in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Elijah the prophet went off to Sidon, and when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, Please bring a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her, Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first make a little scone of it for me and bring it to me and then make some for yourself and for your son. For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. Jar of meal shall not be spent. Jug of oil shall not be emptied before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food, she, himself, and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, nor the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul give praise to the Lord, my soul give praise to the Lord, my soul. the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is God who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My soul give praise to the Lord, my soul It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down, the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. My soul give praise to the Lord, my soul give praise to the Lord. The Lord upholds the widow and orphan, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. My soul give praise to the Lord, my soul
a reading to the Hebrews. It is not as though Christ had entered a man-made sanctuary, which was only modeled on the real one, but it was heaven itself, so that he could appear in the actual presence of God on our behalf. And he does not have to offer himself again and again, like the high priest going into the <coughs> sanctuary year after year with the blood that is not his own. Or else he would have had to suffer over and over again since the world began. Instead of that, he has made his appearance once and for all, now at the end of the last age, to do away with sin by sacrificing himself. Since men only die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ too offers himself only once to take the faults of many on himself. And when he appears a second time, it will not be to deal with sin, but to reward with salvation those who are waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, glory to you, Lord. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes, to be greeted obsequiously in the marketplaces, to take the front seats in the synagogues, and the places of honor at banquets. These are the men who swallow the property of widows while making a show of lengthy prayers. The more severe will be the sentence they receive. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the treasury. And many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put in two small coins the equivalent of a penny. Then he called his disciples and said, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put in more than all who have contributed to the treasury. For they have put all, for they have all put in money they had over. But she, from the little she had, has put in everything she possessed all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From our three scripture readings today, we have a common theme, generosity and sacrificial giving. And we're all called to join in this. It is often the case that those, is it not, that those who have plenty are very loath to give too much. But those who have least are the most generous people. 
If you've ever shaken a charity tin in the high street, you will notice that the well-heeled give you a wide berth and the poorest people, usually little old ladies in very ordinary clothes, will come up and open their purses and go through them and give what they can. It's very noticeable. Perhaps it's in their own plight that sensitises them to what the real need means. If you have gone hungry, really hungry yourself, you are likely to have greater compassion on another than someone who's not really experienced that. You will also be aware of how little it can take to make a difference. A hungry person will welcome a simple bun or a scone or something. A lonely person will welcome a smile. In the Jewish world, the widow's life was pathetic. They had no support at all. No support. They had to beg. She would have to beg for herself and for her children. Remember the widow Naomi and her widowed daughter-in-law Ruth in the book of Ruth. Returning to Bethlehem with Ruth, Naomi cries out, No longer call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Instead, call me Mara, which means bitter. Ruth and Naomi survive on salvaging leftovers in the barley fields. Indeed, widows were grossly exploited by that society. Thus, they became archetypes of those who, depend, who are totally dependent on God. The two widows in question, today's and the one in the book of Ruth, have in common their willingness to give everything they had to help others. It was a daring act of trust. Trust in God's providence that they gave away everything they owned. Their extraordinary self-denying generosity is rooted in a recognition of God's own prodigality, his generosity. If to some extent they are gamblers, staking everything on the final card, it is because they are first lovers, in love with God, who has graced their lives thus far. And this is not a dicey game of chance, but a journey of faith. The widow in our first reading today struggles to fight famine. She's about to cook the last of her food for herself and her little boy before impending death. God, who sends the prophet Elijah to her aid, the point stressed here is in the gospel, is the widow's generosity. Trusting in God, she gives away everything she has. And she's richly rewarded. The jar of meal was not spent and the jug of oil not emptied. And our responsorial psalm reiterates the same thing. The Lord upholds the widow and orphan, but thwarts the path of the wicked. Today's gospel contrasts the attitude of the scribes with that of the widow. The scribes swallow up the property of widows and proudly parade their piety in public. A sharp contrast to the poor widow quietly putting in her two small coins into the temple treasury. Jesus praises her because from the little she had, she put in everything. She did, just as Jesus had advised that rich young man, you remember, that came to him and asked what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. And he was a good man earlier in Mark's gospel. He couldn't give everything. This widow did. The point of Jesus' commendation is that the true measure of gift is not how much is given, but how much remains behind. The percentage of one's means, which the gift represents. The self-denial involved, the cost to the giver. In short, the point of the story is that a true gift, to give everything one has, the true gift is a sacrifice. In his book, The Prophet Cahill Gibran, he writes, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. 
tested by fires of life, the proverbial widow finds little support from man and enters that realm where everything and everyone is God's gift, God's grace. She experiences the joy of giving that is itself its own reward. Someone said, life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you like, but you can only spend it once. Let us stand and profess what we believe in. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. On the third day he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a community, we bring all our prayers to our loving Father, knowing that he will give us all we need. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Bishop Richard, and all the clergy, that they may lead the people of God with love, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As the COP26 summit continues, may all those involved gain a deeper understanding of how to treat our planet with reverence and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here and those unable to join us, that through faith and devotion, we are joined together in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are sick, housebound, lonely, and all those who are struggling in any way, that through our prayers, they may find comfort and love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all our loved ones who have gone before us and rest in the presence of God. We also pray for those who have no one to pray for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us offer up our own heartfelt prayers to our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us call upon our Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary, 
to join us in prayer as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, our refuge, our strength, hear the prayers of those gathered here today with us physically or on the live stream. And grant, we pray, that what we ask for in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm saying this Mass this morning for the repose of the soul of Alice Beadle. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewed to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of Christ, your Son, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Edward the Confessor, Saint Pius X, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread.
let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's great to see so many of you here again today and also those many, many of them uh, bigger than this congregation joining us on the live stream as well. We're all worshipping together, that's the main thing. Just to remind you that there is a retiring collection today. You've forgotten what they were, haven't you? It's been such a long time. Um, it's actually for the retired priests of the diocese. Um, I will never retire, so you're not giving to me. It's all right. As uh, the bishop said, you'll never retire. And I think he's right. I'll drop off the perch first. But um, anyway, the, uh, they will be, there, there will be means for giving at the end of Mass as you go out. Um, please give generously to those priests who have retired and who are about to retire and leave even fewer of us in the field. Um, also, do keep in mind your prayers for vocations for the priesthood. We do really need those desperately. Thank you to all those who've made our Mass possible this morning, our stewards, for people who've opened up, for our readers, for our um, cameraman who's unseen and unheard. Uh, he's he's not, not here today, is he? No. No. Oh, he is. Where is he? Oh, it's not a cameraman. It's a camera lady. Oh, I was saying that the other day. We've all got cameramen and we haven't got any ladies. Thank you, Pippa. Thank you. She's responsible for putting up all the captions for you people at home to join in as well. Thank you to Mike for um, supporting our Mass so beautifully and all the singers. Um, uh, who have I left out? Deacon uh, um, Sean here. <laughs> but as I used to say in the old musical joke, but chiefly yourselves, yes. It's uh, great to be with you. Enjoy the rest of the day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.